have a little turkey dance going out uh, going on out there. It's a couple of hens are getting it on. Now, I really don't know what's going on there, but they're dancing. <laughs> they're fighting. A couple of hens having a squabble. I wonder if they're having a squabble about a boy turkey, a young gobbler, maybe a handsome young gobbler. They are carrying on big time. Now, I turkey hunt. I love turkey hunting just about as much as any kind of hunting out there. I've turkey hunted and taken several with a bow. Turkeys are not actually designed by God to be hunted with a bow. They are designed to be hunted with a shotgun. Uh, you do have a problem of shooting turkeys with a bow and then flying away with an arrow or uh, simply flying away. Well, even if you shoot all the way through them, move right over here for a second. Even if you shoot all the way through them, they uh, sometimes will fly away. They have special arrows that will cut their head off. And uh, it really doesn't take quite as precise a shot as you might really think. But the other part about hunting with a bow that I don't like and why I quit butt turkey hunting with a bow is that you pretty much have to be in a blind of some sort. You have to build a blind out of natural stuff, which is how I kill my very first turkey with a bow was building blinds and I've done kill several with a bow that way. But a lot of times you use these little pop-up tents and they work great for turkey hunting. They work great because you can move around uh, and the turkeys can't see you moving inside of there. So you can look through the deals and you can really, uh, really have a great chance of, <laughs> those girls are getting it on, aren't they? You can have a great chance of uh, taking one. Look at, the, look at a lot nine laying there by them. He just looking at them, just kind of enjoying the show saying, you silly turkeys, that's why we call you turkeys. But um, look at that. They are really getting after it. But, uh, but you can't see all of the exciting things that happen around you when you're hunting out of a tent or a blind. You're limited in your sight area. When you're leaned up against a tree or in a, a, a turkey lounger chair of some sort, um, setting down low to the ground, camouflaged up, and you can see 360 degrees around you. Is that one giving up? I think so. Act like they're, they act like they're getting ready to breed. This might be strange girls there, I don't know. Anyway, that one is totally giving up and the other one still wants to fight. That is really something. I've seen turkeys do that a little bit in the woods, but not for as long as these girls. They've been going at it for quite some time. Okay, girls, I'm gonna leave you to whatever you're doing. I think the fight is over and one turkey is whipped. I can't believe she doesn't just run off. Oh, I might kill her, I don't know. Would they do that? That's crazy. Golly, it's a little later in the morning. I had seen the turkeys, hens fighting out there earlier. It's gotten a little later. I came around to take another look, and there's gobblers strutting. There's turkeys everywhere. I had to go out and holler at my little babies, uh, wild child and little whitey, because I hadn't seen them yet this morning, and I worried about them. I always worried that something's going to happen during the night, like it did with Lucille a couple of weeks ago when we lost little Lucille. Doggone it. I still almost cry thinking about that, but both of them are fine. I went out and hollered at them, and both of them came out looking at me stretching. They just slept in late this morning. I wish I could do that occasionally. Actually, I do it every now and then, but very infrequently. I was wanting to sleep in a little bit this morning. I worked until 2 o'clock this morning, or yesterday morning, or this morning. I guess it's this morning, just a few hours ago. Look at those gobblers out there strutting like that. That is just, I just love to see a gobbler strut. I don't care. It's kind of like looking at a beautiful buck or a beautiful woman. You just never get tired of that. That's kind of like a big old gobbler. You just never get tired of seeing them strut, fan that tail out there and puff up, show off their manhood for the ladies. Hey guys, we can all relate. 
Okay, guys and girls, I have been promising Chris for the last couple, two or three days that I'd let her come out and feed the babies. I've just been so busy. We've been going, just got a jillion things going on right now. and just, uh, just been so busy that I've not been able to let her come out here and feed the babies any this, this week. So we're going to do that this evening. Chris has got a really nice, big, beautiful uh, bowl of food right there. Where's your bowl of food, honey? Well, it's not quite so pretty as it was. It was a beautiful bowl of food. I covered it up with some wheat bread and some apples, but there's a lot of carrots in there. A lot of carrots. They love those carrots. I've got some apples cut up in small pieces. I've got some wheat bread, a couple slices of wheat bread, some apples, and I've got Cheerios on the bottom. So I've got a real nice, real nice little meal there for them this evening. I'm getting ready to let them out. And they're ready. They're pacing back and forth over there right now. Look at them. Talk to them, baby. Come on, babies, you hear? Come on, babies. Let's get them out here and see what happens. Come on, babies. Come on, babies. Come on, babies. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Hi, guys. Hi there, pretty baby. Hi there. That's my baby. Oh, yeah. you such a pretty little boy. Look at what Chris has got over there. Oh, my. Oh my little whitey said, there's my, there's my lady that takes care of me. There's my lady that takes care of me right there, yeah. Okay, here we go. Those babies are on cloud nine right now. And Chris is on cloud nine and a half, I promise you. Or nine plus, I don't know what it is there. But she is, she is just tickled to death right there when she's got those two little babies. And those babies are tickled to death also because they're getting a nice good solid. They're, they're drinking less and less milk all the time. Although they are still, they are still, uh, still loving the milk, especially little Whitey. Little Whitey just gobbles it down. Wild Child is getting off it a little bit more. You'll notice that Wild Child still got a lot of white spots on her. Now she's turned into a, to a, to a mature, guy, not mature, not mature at all, but turned into a deer up uh, around her neck. You notice she's got, uh, there's not much spots around her neck, but she's still got spots on her. Look how big she is. Whitey is, uh, Big Whitey is his father, so he is going to be a big boy, and he's got some pretty good little nubbins sticking out already, even though he's just a few months old, And uh, but look how tall she is. She's actually taller than he is. He's going to actually end up being a lot bigger than her, but she's going to be a big old girl too, and uh, I'm thinking about putting her in there with the two, uh, with Ice and Casper, and uh, seeing what kind of wild ice we might come up with, or or a uh, or, or child, the friendly ghost, or something. I don't know what we might come up with, but I think we'll put those two in there together and let them be in the pen together uh, this fall. And uh, might not let these guys run around too awful much this fall. Well, we're gonna let them get as grown as we possibly can. Uh, they need to learn a little bit about the wild, but boy, sometimes those lessons that they learn deadly. I'm talking about deadly. They, uh, I, they, they die. I mean, they get killed. They just don't ever make it. And uh, these guys have, uh, their mama has, has not been able to run around in the woods and teach them exactly how to act. So uh, they, uh, they're not really afraid of much of anything, especially little Whitey. He's just almost like a, a little pet dog. He sure loves those carrots though, don't they? Carrots are something the deer really like. He loves them, doesn't he, baby? He li I like carrots myself. I like carrots myself. We're having a big roast. Jimmy cooked a big old roast with uh, potatoes in there, peeled a bunch of big potatoes and put in there. And, and uh, put some of those baby carrots, about half a sack of baby carrots in there for Jimmy and Chris. That's what we're having for dinner this evening. Oh, Jimmy's turned into a pretty good cook, hadn't he, baby? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I fixed you shrimp camp, camp, scampi and coconut shrimp and, and big fried shrimp, don't I? I mean, or baked. Baked, not fried, yeah, baked. Do what? Those come in a case. They come in a case. Well, yeah, they do. I don't go out and catch them. They come in a box and I take them out and put them in the oven and cook them. That's cooking, isn't it? Yeah. And that, doesn't that make me a good cook? Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, 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 that's a, uh, we love it. We eat it and it works out really good. And I can cook yeah, lots of stuff in that crock pot. That crock pot is really helping me a lot. Those babies, I'm hoping that they'll get filled up on all that stuff there. There's a couple pounds. An adult deer will eat about two pounds of food per day. And of course, these are far from being adults, but they are growing youngins, and so they need plenty to eat, and I want them to have all they want to eat. I keep feed in there, uh, South Fresh Deer food in their, in their building in there, so they've got demand feed all they want. I mean, they don't, 
They finally cleaned that up, but I, can, I just looked in there a minute ago and there's quite a bit of food in there. They finally clean it up, but uh, when they get stuff like fresh fruit and wheat bread, fresh apples, grapes, Cheerios, things like that, that's a treat to them. There's no doubt about it. I can tell that they love that stuff. The adult deer love it. The albino deer love it. Uh, they like that. That's why they get in gardens. That's why they eat fruit off your fruit trees. That's why they do stuff like that. That's why they eat your flowers and your shrubs. Those things are treats to them. They're not what's just normally out there growing in the wild. So they really enjoy it. But uh, Chris is having a ball. And uh, we're going to let these little guys run around a little bit and have some fun. And once they get uh, their bellies full a little bit, I'm sure they'll get off of that, uh, get off of all that and, and go run around a little bit here in a little bit. And, and we'll try to get them doing some zoomies if they do. Now, I had little Whitey out, uh, I guess it was day before yesterday, and he was running out here on the grass and just slip and fell. So he's a little clumsy. We might have ought to named him Bill Dance. <laughs> you hear the turkeys start talking? You hear them? I made a little turkey call and they started turking like crazy. I wonder if I can make one gobble. <coughs> I got them talking pretty good. <laughs> kind of a funny, kind of a little funny deal there. Kind of a little funny. <laughs> little Whitey's not backing up from that food, is he, baby? They are so pretty. You know, uh, wild child, you can look at her and she's kind of rough looking. You know, her hair's kind of rough looking. Look at Whitey, he's smoothed down, looking like a big, beautiful buck. Except he's just a little baby buck. He is gorgeous, so I just love him to death. I sure do. He is just a beautiful little boy. That's all there is to it. Just a beautiful little boy. Boy, the turkeys are talking up a storm. Listen to them. Wow, <coughs> Jimmy, that's a terrible calling. Golly. Well, the little babies got a little bit full, so we'll see if they won't run around a little bit. We are still not quite... Uh, finished uh, with the uh, new new headquarters here for the albino deer. Uh, we are finished with the exception of putting the coyote wire down, but uh, we've uh, left these guys in here. We moved them over here to put the safe in the other day, and I uh, hope you all enjoy that safe video. That's kind of funny, but uh, you can take a look at uh, Prince Charming there and just see how magnificent his horns have become. Uh, Angela Shepard noticed that he's got a broken uh, time there he has broken a little bit off and uh, in fact he's broken quite a bit off of that one side right there that I noticed right now and uh, I guess that maybe Angela noticed that and I didn't but he really he's really messed that up doggone him I'm gonna have to go in there and find that one good thing about when he breaks his stuff off we will be able to find it and it should match up but I might be able to glue it back on and have those uh, sheds when he sheds them come springtime he may not have much left up there. I don't know how brittle they are. Uh, I just don't have any idea, but uh, I bet it's laying around over there by that gate somewhere probably because he fights that gate a lot. I don't see him laying there by that tree. There's the tree we put in there for him to rub the velvet off of. That's a cedar tree. They love to rub on cedar trees. You can see he's done it big time. You can see he's rubbed halfway up on that cedar tree. Of course, he is a big boy. He can do that. But uh, you see, they're really enjoying their new, their new, uh, their new digs there. They're really enjoying the, the new pen that they've got, and they're just using half of it. We still we got them shut off that other half over there, but they come back in and sleep at night in the building. They love that building. They come back in and sleep at night. Now we will probably, uh, I will in fact not probably but build a small building. We'll put over there so they'll have some good shade they can get in over on that other side because. Probably we'll leave the uh, bigger deer over here where there's lots of shade. Probably put the babies over there on the other side uh, where they don't have quite as much shade, but they still have plenty of shade over there. We'll probably put them in a the building over there if they can get in. Uh, just to probably a, a little covered carport type shed like we have with the others. But uh, these guys are just beautiful. And uh, 
And the rut starts pretty soon. These little boys will try to become a man. There's no doubt about that. And I think I'll put Wild Child in there and see what happens. It'll be kind of interesting, kind of fun. But they are beautiful out there in a little bit more natural habitat. And uh, we get some rain. We're going to plant some ryegrass in there and try to get that uh, going real good. And with only just a, a very few deer in it. <laughs> I look around. As I look up there, I see Little Whitey and uh, Wild Child up there kind of wanting to get in there with these deer. They're kind of wanting to get in there. And look at both of them right up there. They'd like to get in here with these with these uh, little albino babies and probably play with them. And we'll let that happen too sometime here in the next couple of weeks. So you'll be able to see uh, Whitey get in there with them. Now, you know, he's a buck and they're bucks, so they're going to fight and mess around. But they're all about equal, I would think. Uh, the albinos might be a little bit larger than little Whitey. But I'll put my money on little Whitey all day long. He's my baby doll. Okay, guys and girls, that'll pretty much wrap up this week's uh, uh, herd video or Lucy's herd video. If you look back behind me, you can see some of our trees are starting to change colors already. It gets absolutely gorgeous here on the ranch on the fall, and you're going to enjoy the fall colors. I don't know how good they'll be because usually when you have a really, really dry year like we've had this year, and baby doll, it has been dry. I'm telling you, it's been dry. Uh, from last May or June all the way through this May and June and now several months after that. For the last 16, 17 months or so, 18 months or so, uh, man, oh, man, oh, man. It's just been dry. It's been dry. This year has been a drought beyond all droughts. It's just been something that I haven't seen very often happen. But it's going to rain sometimes. When it rains, it'll pour. Isn't that what uh, the salt people said? When it rains, it pours. That's right. I can't remember the name of the salt. Gosh, it's fun to get old. <laughs> Guys and girls, I hope you enjoy the uh, the Lucy's Herd video, Chris's Herd video, whatever we call this thing. Not sure what we called it this week, but it's been a lot of fun. Chris got to feed her babies, and uh, we got to have a great time here on the ranch, as usual. Be sure to tell all your friends about Jim and Chris, Jimmy and Chris Houston's Twin Eagle Ranch. We're having a lot of fun out here. Remember, I sure do love you.